why inferred types are bad? So inferred types are where you let the language itself work out the type of a variable. For example, in Python, you could do this and not specify what the type is. Many statically typed languages have added ways for the compiler to infer types. For example, in Go, you can use the colon equals. In C Sharp or Java, you can use var. In C++, you can use auto. In Rust, you could just use let without any, any uh, type here. So advantages of inferred types. It takes less to type. Sometimes, I mean, if you're writing var or int, what's the difference, honestly? It's more concise, so it's less code, and it's easier to refactor sometimes. So for example, if you say get message and you change the type of get message, you don't need to change you know, any type here. But this also creates other issues, which I'll go into later. So what are the disadvantages of inferred types? Number one, your code is harder to read. So try to work out what this code is doing. So I'm kind of, this is C++, I'm kind of cheating a bit because I didn't put the, uh, the type in the parameter. I used auto in the parameter, but I'm giving you the full experience of having auto everywhere. So what is this code doing? So first, auto data, what's data? What is it? Do you, do you know? What is it? Can you work it out? No, you have no idea. Let's give you the parameter. So at least give you one hint. So this is a const std map of an int of an std vector of an std shared pointer to data, which is itself a struct that I made. Even with that, I still don't really understand what the author is referring to. So this is, I wrote this code, but I still can't read it. Well, I didn't, I wouldn't actually write auto, it's an example. This is with the types. So these are quite long types. So you have std pair, const int of std vector of an std shared pointer to data. And then the next one is std shared pointer to data. Uh, yeah, why are you doing this? But it's basically laziness. People don't want to write long types. So C++ had one problem. Types in C++ can be very verbose because you have a long, long type names. To fix this, let's use auto everywhere and then make our code completely unreadable. So we're creating a problem. Let's use another problem to fix another problem. It's basically what you're doing. You can remove with definitions. So for example, you could do this. You could say using vector equals, this. then you don't need to write STD and it's a bit shorter. The problem with this is people can then redefine vector to something else because C++ is not strict. So people don't bother doing that and then write std everywhere and it's verbose. In C++ it's basically pick your poison, use std everywhere and have verbose type names. Or you could redefine and then risk having someone redefine the term vector and then having your code do something you don't want. So you have this problem. Or you use auto and then you have no idea what your code is doing without context. Here's a C++ example. So what is values? Any hints? What, what does values do? The var value, what's value? What is it? What type is it? Can you guess what this code is doing? You have literally no idea what this code is doing. And I see this all the time in examples, in tutorials, even chat to we write this nonsense. Here you have to look and say, get value. Oh, it's an int. Oh, but if you change get values, it can completely break your code as well. This is just terrible. I would never do this. I would always write the type. Number two, you still have to write the types sometimes anyway. So you can avoid it here, but you can't avoid it in functions. So you need to write them in functions, right? Okay. Uh, but then you also can't write them in classes. You have to write the type in classes, but then you also can't, you, when you create a type you have, of a class, you need to write the class type. So you can't, you can kind of use it half and half. Uh, and you also can't use it in constants. So you're using it half the time anyway. Why not just write it all the time, have your code be more readable and be 100% consistent. So you sometimes have to write it, sometimes you don't have to write it. Why not just be consistent? Number three, you create subtle bugs. 
This is actually a bug I had recently. So here I just have a struct just to have not have like eight different parameters and I just pass the struct to this function, which is basically just passing, uh, passing some tokens. That's all I'm doing. So the top bit of this function is a bit complicated, but it's basically I'm just looking, is it a skippable character? If it is, then skip. The bottom part is really what you care about, which is where the bug occurred. So I normally, well, basically always in Go will write the type. Here I forgot and I had a bug, which I was like, well, what's wrong? Basically it was skipping a token. I didn't understand why, but try and find the bug here. Basically, if I write the type, it will give me a compile error instantly. Cannot use character index because variable of type pointer to it, pointed to an in. So it's a pointer and I'm basically, if you don't write the type, it sets previous character index to a pointer. So I'm basically setting it to a memory address, which I don't want to set it to the memory address. I want to set it to the value. So one, I forgot to write the, um, I forgot to dereference the pointer and I didn't write the type. So it didn't remind me that it's what, so basically write the type and then it reminds me, oh, I need to write that. So you're basically at the mercy of the compiler. Did you want a pointer? I don't know if you wanted a pointer, but you wrote a pointer. So the compiler thinks you want a pointer. You have subtle bugs that are very hard to find, but just writing the type gets rid of the bug instantly. It gives you a compile error. Whereas you're just at the mercy of the compiler if, if you just use inferred types all the time. Number four, makes it hard to learn new APIs and libraries. So here we're gonna pass a JSON file and just print the values. Imagine you wrote this code three months ago or six months ago. You don't remember what it was about or what's, what its things are, and you see this. We have var client. Okay, so var client, you can kind of guess that client is a HTTP client, which is a guess is a struct or a class. Var response equals await client get a sync. So maybe it's a string. I'm not sure what response is, to be honest. Var content equals await response dot, dot content reader string. So I think that's a string. So content has to be a string. So if you're reading as a string, that means response can't be a string. So a string as a response is another type, I think. Okay, var result equals JSON serializer dot serialize list dictionary string object. So I think this is a list dictionary string object because we put that in the deserialize, but I'm guessing that could just, I don't know. So I, I we, okay, client has an HTTP client. Okay, a response, I don't know. Content, I think is a string and result is, uh, why do I have to hold this in my head? This is just, I would rather just read what the type is instead of having to work it out. Okay, var grouped equals result dot where. I, so I have literally no idea what grouped is at all. And then we go to the for each loop, var group. I don't know what grouped is. So of course I don't know what group is. And then as I don't know what group is, I don't know what item is. So why, why are you making your code a mystery? Just write the goddamn types, then you can actually read it. And I would argue that if your type is really this complicated, trying to remember it, could you really remember the grouped is an I innumerable I grouping of string dictionary string object. Could you honestly keep this in your head? Just write the types and then it's not a mystery. And then if you read this in three months time, you can actually understand what the code is doing instead of having to be a detective just to read your own code. Here's something that happened to me recently. So I was looking at the LLVM API for Go and this was an example on the GitHub. This is the example they actually showed. I was like, so, okay, so IR new module, what does it return? What am I using? And you you call it M, like M, like M could be literally anything. Hello, okay, is it, is it is it actually a string or is it, so it's new char array from string. So it's a char array, right? I think, and then stir, new global def, stir isn't, these are terrible names and you're not telling me what the types are. I don't know what the types are. I don't know what this API is like. I can't learn it. This is terrible practice. You shouldn't do this. I would change it to this. So first, did you know that these are all pointers? You have no, and also the second one is a, is a constant dot char array, not a char array normally in Go. It's a specific char array. Did you know that? No, you have no idea what any of this is doing. Plus I'm giving these good names. So hello literal, it's a literal hello. Hello, literal, global string definition. It's a definition of a string, so global string, and it's global. I'm giving things good names and I know the type so I can actually read my own code now. 
If you write the type, you will actually understand the API better. Number five, refactoring can break your code. So here we have an enum list of instructions. And then we just get the instructions and then print them, right? We could do other things, it doesn't matter. But what is instructions again? We don't know. We have to look at the function. So it's a static, it's a static list of instructions, right? So it's just a list of instructions. Okay, that makes sense. We print them, okay, it works. But what happens if someone changes them to an array? So now it's an array, okay. Of course this would still work, but then you can't like you don't actually know if it changed from a list of an or an array. Whereas if you wrote the type, you would get notified of this change. You you could your code could do other things and you wouldn't know. What happens if someone changed it to a list of list of instructions? Then your code would print this system.collections.list program plus instruction like and then you're just like your code breaks and you have no idea why and what part of the code breaks it could be in a massive function you have no idea which function is broke this is a nightmare if you just write the type you'll get an error here you get an error you can't explicitly so you oh it, they've changed the api i'm no if you literally just write var you have no idea if something's going to break or where this is my summary of inferred types everywhere basically I will save myself a few seconds of typing now, only to suffer hours of debugging and trying to read my code later. That's basically what you're doing. In my opinion, code should be as readable as possible. For me, that includes writing the type and giving clear names. So I don't really write Python much, but if I did write Python, I definitely wouldn't write this because this is actually very hard for me to read. What does to some return? I don't know. What's numMap? So you kind of need to understand a lot about Python to understand what numMap is. If you use the curly braces, it's a dictionary. Why would you tell me it's a dictionary? You have to just know. You just literally have to know. And you have to work out that you're returning in the square brackets. Therefore, it's returning an, an array or a list. Why not just write this? This is just, this is so much harder to read. Python is advertised as an easy language to learn, but I find this way harder to read than any other language. I would write this like this and not care. So literally, I'm just saying every type. So this is a num map, it's a dictionary. To sum returns a list of int. And then I'm writing curly braces and semicolons because I prefer that, because I don't care, because I don't like Python. So do I never use inferred types? Basically, almost never. So when I use types, so I'll usually write something like this in C sharp. So I'll write string builder output equals new. I won't write new string builder every time because it's kind of unnecessary. You kind of understand from the type. You could in theory write var output equals new string, but I just don't like that. Probably because I hate var so much because everyone uses it and I can't read their code. Basically, if you ever see auto or var in my code, then you know I didn't write it. There are some situations where it's not needed at all. For example, in zig, you can have the top one where you say const array equals five uh, i32 then five i it's completely unnecessary to write this twice so i guess if you want to write something like this var index equals zero it's tolerable because it's so obvious what the type is it will default to an integer still i i, I just don't understand why you don't just write integer because it's the same amount of letters uh but never do this all this, this is garbage. No, no one could read your code. They have to go and see what index is to see what your type is, because maybe it's an int, maybe it's a uint. Maybe, I, we don't know. In many languages like Go, C++, Rust, Odin, this is the standard. Many would say you shouldn't go against standard practice. I don't really care about this. If the standard of a language is a bad and lazy practice that leads to harder to read code, harder to find bugs, makes logic bugs more likely, makes API libraries changes hard to detect, makes you understand their language less, then I won't follow the standard. Would you also do this? So imagine you have a GIMP or a Photoshop uh, project and you decide to name your layers this. Is this a good idea? How about this? What do these folders contain? Is this a good idea? This is basically what you're doing when you use inferred types. You don't know what anything is.